So today's video is a little bit more of a rant, um, particularly about old keyboards, but um, well, mainly about old keyboards, particularly about this Model M here. Um, <clears throat> This <laughs> is particularly my generation's fault uh, as, you know, millennials are getting older, we're getting um, nostalgic for our childhood, and so these things are starting to go for outrageous prices. Um, this is a bog standard 101 key um, second generation Model M from uh, 1993, as you can see. Um, nothing really that great, special about it. But yet these are going for obscene prices on eBay now um, and collectors and whatnot. I have a few of them just because over the years I've picked them up from um, various places and stuff. Used to be you could find them in like state surplus and things real cheap um, <clears throat> or free even. And uh, nowadays I'm seeing them go for obscene amounts of money. Uh, I just wanted to talk to that and give a PSA and give my thoughts on the situation right now. Granted, I know how the basic things of capitalism work, you know, people pay what the market, or the market will bear what people will pay. That being said, I feel like I have to say this. Um, these are not very rare. They've been making these boards continuously in one form or the other since the mid-1980s. First IBM, then Lexmark, then Unicomp. There are literally millions of these boards in existence. They're about as rare... <clears throat> as tattoos on a millennial or uh, outrage on social media. And that means, you know, they are not rare. They are very common. Now, when I say they're not rare, I'm talking specifically about this 101 win keyless layout uh, with the numpad and everything. They've been making these for years. There are some versions of this, like the SSK and the Kiss Shaver, that are actually rare. Um, this here is not though. So if you see an auction or somebody saying it's a rare vintage IBM keyboard and it looks like this, uh, scam, run. So also these things are getting old now. Um, this one's, you know, going on 30. Uh, the, the, the newer ones, you know, the newer vintage ones in this color scheme and everything going on 25, 30 years old, they're gonna have issues. Bare minimum when you get one of these, you're gonna have to take it apart and clean it. Uh, you know, there's probably a few decades of human detritus inside the inside the barrel plate and stuff you're gonna have to clean up you may have to bolt mod it uh you may have an led that's burnt out you may have to replace keycaps uh you know because these do pop off easily and get lost over time you may have to um, replace the membrane you may have uh, because of water damage and stuff like that uh, there are just all sorts of problems that these things have as they get old like most things that get old. I will tell you, once you hit your mid-30s, you realize that ibuprofen is the real sensu bean. Um, the, these things are just, you know, they're going to have a problem. They're going to have problems. You can buy a restored one, um, but then that's going to run you a premium too because someone needs to put the work into restoring it. Again, I don't want to dismiss anyone's business model, but, eh, you know, I mean, I've seen some restored ones go for obscene amounts of money when um, really I don't know that they're worth it. Uh, then comes the other part of putting these on a modern computer. Uh, these use SDL ports. Um, you know, most of the cables that come with them are PS2. Uh, if you have a newer machine that has USB, bare minimum, you're going to need an active USB adapter, which is in the neighborhood of $10, 10 12 $20. $20. You can also get a Soarer's adapter. You can make one. I've made them before, or you can buy one. Uh, I can't make them as nice as this guy on eBay can buy them, and these are more like $35, $40, but these are reprogrammable. The other nice thing about the Soros adapters is they come in various ends. You know, you can basically anything you can pin out to the controller you can do. Uh, you know, various AT, RJ45 terminal keyboard versions and all that stuff. Uh, but, you know, then again, you know, if you're looking at an old M that's going to need a, an adapter, that's another cost. So. Uh, you know, I see these going, and I'm going to put some eBay auctions here, you know, for $75, $80, $100, you know, on top of the work that's going to need to be done, on top of the parts you may have to buy, on top of the adapter, you're probably looking, um, you know, and the ones that are going for under $100 I'm seeing are still, like, they're missing keycaps, they're broken. Uh, you know, I do see an auction going for a fair price every once in a while, but they keep escalating, going up, and I don't... You know, I don't understand. I kind of understand it. Collectors' markets are weird, but I, I'm not really a collector. I guess I just have these. Um, maybe, maybe I have a hoarding. I, I have a hoarding issue. I'm trying to turn into a YouTube career. Uh, that being said, this is not the worst culprit I have seen uh, doing this. Uh, let me bring that in. Get ready! Oh Lord, he coming! 
this, uh, the M122. I do like these. Um, they have a, you know, 240 degree terminal plug on them and stuff. So you have to get an adapter to use them with a PC. They are easily adapted to the PC. Uh, they are fun. You can use a Sora's adapter to reprogram these keys and everything. Um, I need to post my maps to GitHub, but I, or some kind of Git. I run my own Git server because screw the cloud. Um, <laughs> you know, and these are fun, but I see these. People claim that these are rare. These are not rare. These were used extensively in point of sale systems. Um, this one came from like an auto shop, and I think it was their keyboard on their alignment system for like, you know, doing four wheel laser alignments. So it was covered in all kinds of grease and gubbins and um, took a little bit of cleaning up. You know, it was missing keycaps, so I added like a panic keycap and replied to replace some of these, scavenge these and stuff like that. Um, you know, still, I think I had 20 bucks, maybe 30 in this. Um, but I see these going for, you know, broken, going for like 175, 100 bucks. Stop, don't pay that much for these. Uh, they are super common. Um, they were, these are probably used in a harsh environment. They're probably gonna take even more work than the 101 key layout. Um, and you're, you're definitely gonna have to buy a Soros buyer, build a Soros adapter on top of that. And, you know, they are a non-standard layout, so like you're gonna have to get used to a cross nav instead of a T nav. You know, and, last and here, Unicomp still sells these. Uh, you can get an M122 USB from Unicomp, I think for like $100, $120. So, and it's USB. Uh, you know, granted, it's not the same feel and look and everything. Fair enough, but, you know, it is a 122 key layout that, you know, you can have today, brand new, with a warranty. So, um, I, I don't spend too much on these. Uh, don't let somebody tell you. If you see this listed as rare or special or something, it's not. They they are super common. Uh, they're all over. Um, go to like tech recycling places. You'll probably see a couple. Uh, you know, <laughs> hang around your local auto shop or or um, uh, you know like industrial area. You know, somebody's doing like maybe they have like a CNC machine or something that's older and they're throwing out. It probably had this keyboard. <laughs> they aren't that that uncommon. Um, it does have this thick cable though. Man, that is a nice thick cable. Uh, I like that. Uh, these do not have a replaceable cable, uh, you know, or well, removable cable. It is replaceable, but it's not like a connector in the back. Um, you will need like an extension cord unless your, you know, desktop is right next to your, to your keyboard. Um, but again, don't pay too much for these. Okay, we've gone from massive to tiny. Um, so in the early 90s, most people wanted a numpad and the SSK did not sell too well. Fast forward 30 years, 25, 30 years, tastes have flipped. Most people do not want a numpad. So these are super in demand. They didn't make and sell that many of them. So these are legitimately rare and more valuable. Um, so you're gonna pay a little bit more for an original SSK. Problem is, parts are hard to find. Unicomp still sells parts for the 101 key version, the original one I showed, and the N122. Not for these. Uh, you know, these have a different membrane, a different barrel plate. Uh, that's another thing I forgot to mention, the backing plate in the back. Uh, it's metal and will rust sometimes. Um, it, these, these are rare, but these are becoming more collectible just because, and I mean, I'm using mine. I use this very rarely now just because I'm worried that if something happens to it, it's going to be a bear to fix because parts for it are a lot harder to find than the, than the M122 or the 101 key version. Um, that being said, if someone has this listed for an obscene amount of money and says it's rare, that's not a scam. That is correct. Another one like that is the Kish Saver, which is a terminal style. I don't have one, but it's a terminal style keyboard that's kind of this smaller form factor. Those are rare. There are some specific uh, oddball ones that are rare. Uh, industrial case, the gray cased ones, very rare. Also command a premium. Um, but, you know, these aren't the bog standard ones. Um, these are more collector's items, I think, nowadays. And that brings me to the reason why I think these are overpriced. This is a brand new Model M. Well, not brand new. I've had it for a while and I've been using it. Um, made by Unicomp. You can buy it brand new today for like 104 bucks, you know, a little bit more with shipping. Uh, it has a warranty. It's not going to need work. It comes with a modern USB plug. You can just plug into anything and go. Um, it is, the, it is a real buckling spring. These are not knockoffs, as I've seen some people call them. They are made with the same, in the same factories and stuff as the, uh, as the, as the Model M the of yore was. Um, you know, you don't get the wind keyless layout. Eh, it doesn't bother me. I'm a Linux user, so I can, I remap these to something else. Um, 
you know, they, they have a mylar or vinyl backing mat uh, instead of a rubber one like the old one, so they are a little bit more pingy. They are different, but the feel and the usability is the same. Um, you know, I think these look better than the classic ones. I know beige is all the rage. <laughs> that kind of rhymes, but, um, you know, this black tuxedo look, I think looks pretty striking. It looks pretty, looks pretty, uh, looks pretty good. And I think it'll, you know, age better than the, the beige one. The beige one looks like it's from the nineties. This looks like, you know, it could fit on anyone's desk at any time. Blue LEDs are the one complaint I have with this, um, board, you know, Unicomp, get some green ones or something. Yeah. Blue, who, who decided that was a good idea? Um, but other than that, you can get this brand new with a warranty shipped to your door, plug it in, works right away for what people are paying for the old and busted. Uh, let me grab it. Oh Lord, hang on. Uh, for one of these, that's probably going to need work. You're probably going to have to call Unicomp or make an order for parts to repair one of these when you buy them anyway. So I say cut out the middle step. If you're just looking to have a buckling spring keyboard to use for an affordable price, this is the one to get. Yes, it's only two key rollover. If you're a turbo ultra gamer, maybe that's a problem. But yeah, if you're a typist or a casual gamer, you know, fine. It's not, it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, the plastics are a little thinner. Yeah, it's not sounds the same. It doesn't sound exactly the same, but you know what? Um, having a working product on your desk with, with the capability to send it back if something goes wrong, I think that's worth something. Um, maybe you do too, but the existence of this keyboard should make the older ones cheaper in my opinion, um, especially since they're going to need work and they aren't all that rare. Um, again, eh, 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 why, why? Now, I don't mean to shame people for their choices. Uh, if you did spend a lot of money on one of these, you know, leave a comment, let me know. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm spoiled from days when people were basically throwing these in dumpsters and they were free. Um, I don't know, but again, you know, the, these aren't that rare. If, if you see these listed as, if you see the 101 style keyboard listed as rare and like two, $300 or, you know, even like $150 just you know keep looking you'll find a better deal on one don't pay those prices uh they are not that rare again i don't want to shame anybody it is it's your money to do what you want with it but um i see a lot of people getting these and then getting in over their heads with like repairs and stuff there's also a ton of ibm keyboards that were look similar to this but were rubber domes and i've seen those listed too as like clicky model m and i'm like no it's like a aptiva keyboard from the mid 90s it's a squishy squish rubber dome um it's not the buckling spring uh ibm also made a version of the model m with a rubber dome uh so you know be careful about that someone may list it as a model m you may get it and squish squish it's a it's a dome keyboard so again be careful out there folks these are not rare um you know don't pay too much for them i would say fifth for a working version that has all the keycaps that you know maybe just needs a cleanup job i would say 50 to 75 shipped would be about the high end of what i would pay for one um, because even if it's in good working order when you get it you know if you use it the rivets are going to break in fact uh, maybe there is a loose rivet in there on this one now i need to fix you know i mean i'm gonna have to bolt mod this one eventually um but it's going to need work it is an old it's like an old car it's going to it's going to need maintenance and things so uh, you know don't pay too much for it out of the gate be patient take your time let the auctions for like 100 100 150 dollars uh versions of these go and uh and you know hey enjoy your hobby um and you know these are fun to work on i do like them they aren't that hard to work on um, you know, I, you know, it is a fun little project. It is nice to restore something that, you know, maybe was trashed and now can be made into a working part again. That is always fun. So I do understand that desire. Just don't get taken for a ride. Um, that being said, thanks for watching. Uh, I've got more content coming, a uh, link to my Odyssey channel in the description. I'm posting things on the Odyssey sooner than YouTube. Um, remember if you're watching this on YouTube to install Adblock, screw Google, um, don't let them don't let them uh you know make money off of you uh and i will be resuming other content later i just decided a keyboard video and a psa on this would be a, a good thing to do um i'm currently messing with the new dark table release and reading the manual and seeing if i can make some videos out of that 
um, after I get a good understanding of what all the different things do. Um, I've got a rant on GNOME, not the little garden statues, the Linux desktop environment coming up um, in me, I think. Uh, you know, more headphone videos. You know, let me know what you like in the comments. Uh, no guarantee I'll do it just because, you know, I'm doing this for me, for fun. So um, I'm going to do videos on things I want to do videos about. Uh, still using the GoPro, trying a new lighting setup. Uh, I cut it down to 30 frames a second this time to see if we could get some better quality images out of it. But uh, again, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.